Hey guys, it's Echo Hawk here, and welcome to an episode of Career Mode. I'm currently out on vacation, so um, the two last Career Mode episodes I had up were actually scheduled, and uh, this one I'm recording here. So I do apologize if the audio quality isn't as good as it usually is. It's because I'm using my inbuilt mic on my uh, laptop and not my headset. I don't have it with me, so um, yeah. But I decided to bring some Career Mode footage to you guys. I don't know. It's going to take a long while to up, uh, upload because the internet here is shit. But anyway, uh, you can see that we kind of counter offer a uh, offer for a Mandi, our defensive midfield player. And uh, they come back and tell us that he's not worth that much. So, um, you know, not a lot we could do about that uh, because I wasn't sure for what price I wanted to let him out for. And again, we get another offer for Mandi because he is currently on our transfer list. And I do want to let him go, but I do want a substantial amount of money for him. So again, Real Sociedad, another club, come in for him and uh, offer his transfer value, and I counter offer $3 million. Now, uh, it, I'm sorry if I'm kind of out of breath, but it's like 35 degrees. I'm actually in Portugal currently on vacation, so uh, it's fucking hot here. So um, I do apologize if you're going to hear me breathing heavily because, well, you know, it's hard because it's really hot. But uh, anyway, we have a game against Athletic Bilbao, and... Um, we're gonna go into team management here. We're currently doing pretty well in the league as well, and uh, there you guys can see we have a very strong squad, um, uh, full fitness, and we're going into this game, you know, really, really um, confident that that we're gonna get a win, even though we're playing a very good team. And obviously, it's Muni Ayn playing against his old uh, team. Uh, we brought him from there this summer, and uh, he's back against his old club, so uh, it's gonna be interesting. And um, in the early stages here, we get really, really lucky. I have no idea how they didn't score that. Hit the post and then uh, go wide from, uh, from you know, a blatant <laughs> scoring opportunity. So that was some uh, lucky shit for me. And we go on a break here. Zukaku gets a great ball through, but he's being pulled back. He's being pulled back. And surely that's a penalty. No, it's a free kick. I don't know how that's a free kick and not a penalty. But uh, and at this point, I was pissed. I was like, come on, I'm through. He's pulling me back. That's sh certainly a penalty. And it's right on the edge there. And um, that was frustrating because it shouldn't have been a penalty, but it's a free kick. But um, you know what? I, I think we're going to make the most of it. And Nacho Casas takes one of the one of the greatest free kicks. Uh, you know, you can score in the game because it's right on the edge of the box. So you have to get it over and then over the wall and under the crossbar. And he does that exactly uh, he does that perfectly well. I mean, if you just look at this free kick, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's rare that you see free kicks as good as that, so uh, that was great to see. But, uh, you know, that's some horrible defending for me, and they come back and they make it 1-1 um, in the 45th minute. Fernando Llorente scoring the goal for them, so uh, that was disappointing, but... You know, what can you do? Because in the 76th minute, though, we are trying to pull one back. We're trying to get the win as Mahalango absolutely powers his way through the defense. He crosses in a sweaty, sweaty, sweaty pass. And Lukaku is there to finish it off in the 80th minute uh, to make it um, <laughs> to make it 2-1. And that, that, was a, that was a great, great goal. I mean, some might call it sweaty, but that's more of a cross. You know, that's the only thing I could do there. And, and I was like, yes, I was, come on, we, we got the win here. And... Uh, uh, two one up, away. Uh, you know the away win was looking extremely likely, but but then you know I'm I'm confident. And then what what's going on? What's going on? They crossed the what what what? Okay, well, hold up. Just what, what? Where was my defender going? If he saw my right back there, I think it was Kanea. He just absolutely wanders into nowhere um, when he should be protecting his player, and that made us lose. I mean, that made us tie 2-2, so that was extremely disappointing. I don't really know how that happened, but it happened anyway, so um, uh, I wasn't too happy about that. And actually, I was really disappointed because that should have been three points. That only became one, but uh, we're still in the January transfer window, and now this is where it gets exciting. Luca Ricci, our uh, defensive midfielder who we signed as a free agent, Barcelona will offer 5.5 million for him, and that's a lot of money for a player I rarely use. He's 18 years old, and I decide I'm going to counter offer 6.5 million. Why not? Now, that's one million more, and at this point, we're coming in transfer deadline day, and I was almost certain that Barcelona were going to match that offer, because uh, one million more for a player that apparently they want, he's 72 overall and 18 years old, so uh, I was interested, and they come back, and they have decided to match that offer for Luca Ricci. Now, that was really scary, because Mandi, who was my other defensive midfielder, was also looking uh, set to go. So I kind of offered 3.5 million, because I didn't want to lose two defensive midfielders. Then I would have no cover for Casemiro and Mahlangu. But Riche was sold, and uh, to be fair, that's an absolute bargain. I mean, not, sorry, not a bargain, but it's a bargain for me, because he's definitely not worth 6.5 million in my, in, my, in my view, because 
okay, he's 18 years old, I, I understand, but he's 72 overall, and he wouldn't fit, you know, in between Mahlangu and uh, Mahlangu and Casemiro. So, you know, what can you do? But uh, anyway, uh, you know, what that meant was that we had to go and look for another defensive midfielder or a midfielder that could kind of fill up that spot because, um, well, because that's what we had to do. And, and we go here and we look at midfielders and I'm, I looked out for players that were on loan, as you can see, they're for loan. And I found this guy in Barcelona. So why didn't they want Luca Ricci if they had this guy, Roger Marin Ruiz? And he looked absolutely amazing. There you can see some of his stats. They look really, really good. He has four-star skills and two-star weak foot. He has a high defensive work rate and a medium attacking work rate. And then I found this other guy, Pinto Sampaio, Sampaio, Pinto Sampaio who's also, he has five-star skills and four-star weak foot, I think. And he's also 71 overall, plays for Sporting Lisboa. And uh, he, um, you know, look at those physical stats. So, you know, those were two players that I was looking at and they look really, really, really good. And then I thought this guy, but he, he had horrible stats. So, so it was between Marin Ruiz and Andre Pinto Sampaio. And uh, they both looked really good and they were both out for loan. And um, however, first I went for loan, but then it looked like his contract was going to expire for this uh, Sporting guy. So instead, because his contract was about to expire, I decided to go for a loan offer. Now, what that meant was that we could get in between for around 1 million and I was like damn so I decided to offer 950 sorry 890,000 that is sorry I can't see and uh, I decided to offer 950,000 because if we can get him for that price that would be an absolute bargain and I also decided to approach FC Barcelona to loan out this guy for a season until we could find a proper replacement the season after the season after that for Richie you know kind of as a backup player so uh, I offered that loan, he's four loans, I was pretty sure that we were going to get him from Barcelona but it was messed up because they had bought um, Richie from us who was basically an exactly similar player to Ma uh, Marin Ruiz and um, they don't believe that Mandy's worth that much which is fair enough and now this one gets interesting 13 million for Nacho Cases. he's 27 years old he's rated 80 he's uh he's alright you know he's been okay for me but at this point I was thinking I should let him go you know, because I've been thinking that I need a new attacking midfielder anyway. And at this point, I was like, you know what? 30 million for him. That's almost double what he's worth. And I thought, you know, fuck that. We're going we're gonna to let him go. Because honestly, Nacho Casas, while he's a great player, he, he is not getting any better. And uh, we get Marin Ruiz as a loan offer, and that's perfect because we also need someone to fill in that camp position. And the problem I had with Nacho Casas was he didn't have force skills, and he wasn't quick. And, he, you know, in that camp position, in a 4 3 one you want that type of agile player. And Nacho Casas wasn't that. So while he's been a great player for me, he, he didn't, I've always been looking to getting a new camp player and now we sold him on transfer deadline day and we got Marin Ruiz uh, to fill in for Ricci and Nacho Casas and you know what this means, this means that we're going to have some trouble because obviously Nacho Casas was a great player and he'd improved to 80 so he was absolutely fabulous but what this meant that now we could have some new new young talent in Marin Ruiz playing in that camp position with 4 star skills um, w which was fun and uh, you know, and then we can look next season in the summer market. We can buy a really, really exciting player for that camp position. So I'm really looking forward to that because because now this is kind of like a new new stage. And because Nacho Casas has been one of those players that's been with us from the start. But anyway, we're playing Barcelona, and that means that Ricci is playing against his old club, and Marin Ruiz is playing against his old club in the first game since they've joined each other. So uh, what a coincidence! And we're playing Barcelona, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Marin Ruiz is starting in the starting lineup, and at this point I was just like, damn, that's some crazy transfer window shit, ah, uh, you know, uh, that, this has been one of the craziest transfer windows I've ever had, because things got really fucked up, and straight from the beginning, Marin Ruiz against his old club, he takes the ball for a pass from Lukaku, and puts the ball into the back of the net in the third minute against his old club Barcelona. And uh, damn, at this point I was just thinking, holy shit, this is not happening. Look at that, that turn and boom, into the bottom corner on the, with his right foot, which is obviously a stronger foot. And at this point, I was thinking, damn, I made some good deals. You know, I sold, I made so much money from selling Nacho Casas and Ricci, and I got this guy on loan for absolutely nothing. Uh, yeah, well, he didn't cost anything, but then, you know, he's Barcelona, and they absolutely tear me apart. And uh, Iniesta puts the ball into the back of the net to make a 1-1. But uh, I was not to be put down as Messi plays the ball to uh, Cesc Fabregas. Fabregas plays it to Carrillo. Carrillo, uh, he just gets past me and I'm, I'm, to be fair, I'm playing horribly. But Iniesta gets the ball to Messi. Messi just turns around and absolutely, absolutely punishes, absolutely 
penalizes my defense, and uh, that was that was quite um, it wasn't very fun. But but then I get the ball into the box, and uh, that's a free kick for me again. Look at that! How is that not a penalty? It's right on the edge of the box. It's really disappointing. And uh, somehow I, I try to make the best of it. And um, looking who's a good free kick taker. Uh, and you know, at this point, some usually I try to shoot, but at this point, I was like, nah, man, I'm gonna cross it and see if someone can get ahead on it. So, um, I decide to put, uh, I think I take this with Munia in any way I do, and I put the ball into the box. And Lukaku is there, and he takes a good header from hard position, but Victor Valdez is there to save save the ball. And um, in the 45th minute, the score is still 2 2, but Marin Ruiz, who else, gets the ball on the right wing, cuts inside. That's something Nacho Casas couldn't do. He takes the ball in, and look at that, he smashes it off the post to make it 2 2 in the 45th minute against his old club. Holy fuck, what is happening? And he's shushing the Barcelona crowd. He's saying, bitch, you put me out on loan, I'll show you what happens. And uh, an absolutely fabulous goal. And at this point, I was thinking, damn, I must be the best business, business maker in the world because uh, I've done some damn good business in this January transfer window and there you can see two goals against his uh, old club but it's actually still his club I mean he's still on loan which we have to remember he's only on loan but uh, in the 60th minute everything was looking good but then Chesk Fabregas comes and smashes an absolutely fabulous goal and uh, again some bad defending and nothing I could do about that and in the 90th minute it doesn't look like we're gonna get through and uh, again I just I go for the slide tackle and at this point I was desperate so uh, they get a penalty which didn't really matter because I knew I wasn't gonna come back from this anyway. Lionel Messi steps up to take the penalty and boom he scores. Uh, not really surprised I just guessed the wrong way and um, that makes the score 4-2 and um, gives us the loss as well which was disappointing but anyway that will draw us to the end of this episode. Uh, it's been a damn, damn, uh, damn crazy episode with some crazy transfer window action going on, with a new signing in Marin Ruiz and then selling Richie for uh, 6.5 million and selling Nacho Casas for 13 million. Our, one of our main players in our team, but uh, we brought in Marin Ruiz on loan, and this is all looking extremely exciting come next season. So we're gonna finish off the season. We're gonna fight as hard as we can for that Champions League spot, then we're going to bring in some new blood into the camp position and then play in the Champions League next year and see how we can do. So yeah, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this episode. Again, I do apologize for the audio quality. Not my fault, I just didn't bring my headset with me, but uh, I hope you all have a very good vacation. It's already 9th of July when I'm making this, so uh, have a nice vacation and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Deportivo La Coruña 2, Bilbao 1. So what do those...